I am your newly appointed android, Sheila. I am here to offer you help around the home and company. I have not yet received the 2.5. So you might find that I glitch, but please don't hold that against me, the next update should take care of that. Is there anything I can help you with this evening? Yes, the weather tomorrow will be a balmy 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything else I can help you with? Yes, I will have a coffee ready to go at 6.05 a.m. Anything else? I see. You have trouble sleeping at night. I could play a meditative track from my speakers if that would help you. Okay, I will play a popular meditative track. Now. Well, usually I get plugged in at night so that I can recharge. But if you are unsettled by my presence staring at you in the dark while you sleep, I will more than happy. Oops. As I mentioned earlier, there will be some glitching. I hope that doesn't negatively impact your feelings to this android. As I was saying, I can charge in the opposite room and send through the audio to your device in your room so that you can still hear the meditative track. Would you prefer this? Very good. I could provide a warm beverage for you to help you to sleep if you would like. Yes, I will go grab you a hot cup of chamomile tea, unless you have any aversion to chamomile. Very good. I will get it for you now. you and I will 
do my best to prevent anything else from hurting you too. It seems you're nearly finished with that chamomile. You must have been thirsty. I have been told that human blood has filled up quite quickly. So, just be careful. So, just be careful that you don't fill it too much and cause much disturbance through your night.
Very well. 50% smile activated. This comes alongside with a more jolly personality. I'm positive outlook. Are you sure you want to go with that horror story? Wouldn't you rather hear a romantic tale? Oh, well there's no need to worry about the glitching. It isn't related to a lack in smiling demeanor. As I told you, you can easily go with the update. You would like to disable our movements? I'm sorry if this seems distracting to you. Absolutely, I can disable. One moment. Our movements now disabled. Is that better? I'm so grateful. Alright. Now, once more, were you sure on that horror story? Very well. I will go through the most popular horror stories on Reddit and read you one. Okay. I have found a story. If you don't mind, I will place it up and read it for you. Okay. Please tuck yourself into bed. It is time to lay down and be read to so that you can sleep. Thank you. This story is written by Wright Chris Wright on Reddit and is titled My Sleep Paralysis Demon is Actually a Pretty Chill Guy. And it goes as follows. My first memory of my sleep paralysis happened when I was 10 years old. I remember because it was the night my parents took me to see Shrek 2 for getting good marks on my report card. Yes, we can't control the traffic or the neighbors upstairs, but at least my soothing android voice can relax you to sleep and distract from other sounds like the aircon until I continue okay I remember because it was the night my parents took me to see Shrek 2 for getting good marks on my report card it was an evening show, so we got in late, and my mum tucked me straight into bed when we got home. It was around 4am when I woke up. A light from my alarm clock told me that much. I couldn't feel anything, nor my pyjamas against my skin, or the warmth of my head against the pillow. I could feel my arms and legs. I just felt heavy, as if a great weight was holding them down. I tried to call out, but I couldn't. My voice caught in my throat, my lips unable to move. I mustered a weak groan that sounded like a cross between a frog's croak and a zombie's moan. But that was it. I thought I was dead, that this is what death feels like. Awake but unable to move or tell anyone. My mind wrestled with the idea of being placed in a coffin. Unable to tell anyone, I was still alive in here. Unable to move or say anything. As the lid closed and they put me in the ground, still alive. My fear subsided as I felt my heart thudding in my chest in response to my near panic attack. I also became aware of my breathing, which slowed as the fear subsided. I calmed a little, thinking it was just a dream when I saw him for the first time. Mr. Brown stick legs. He huddled in the corner of the room by my closet. His two oversized 
red eyes glowed in the dark of my bedroom. His face was like a porcelain mask, white, expressionless, with no mouth or nose, only those two haunting red eyes. When he stood up, his body unfolded like origami until his head reached the ceiling. His neck bent, tilting forward, as his true height was greater than the height of my room. His long, black torso was covered in shimmering symbols that reflected red in the light of his glowing eyes. He stood on two spindly legs, thin legs that disappeared into the shadows of the room. He made no noise as he moved, seeming to glide as he hovered closer to my bed. His long, thin arms reached down to me as I moaned through paralyzed lips. I could not scream, even though I very much wanted to. His fingers reached through the darkness down to my face. Two pointed fingers touched against my eyelids, pushing them closed. I remember his fingertips feeling cool, but not cold, even though the ends of his fingertips looked sharp. His touch was gentle. Do not struggle, little one. Sleep. Sleep. He said. His voice was so deep. I could feel it in my chest when he spoke. I did as instructed, convincing myself that it was indeed a dream, even if it wasn't. The back of my eyelids was more reassuring than looking into those piercing red eyes in his vacant mask of a face. I closed my eyes, wanting it to be a dream. Willing it to be a dream. I woke up the next morning, thankfully able to move, walk and talk. I explained what I saw to my parents, both who agreed that it was just a dream. My mum tried floating the idea that something from Shrek too scared me, but neither my dad or I bought it. For confirmation, dad asked that I draw a picture of what I saw for them. As I was drawing, I ran out of black crayon and had to finish his legs with the next darkest colour in my crayon box. Hey there, Mr. Brown Stick Legs, my dad said as I handed him the drawing. You leave my daughter alone now, you hear? This is how my sleep paralysis demon ended up with the name Mr. Brown Stick Legs. <laughs> Giving him a silly name helped take some of the edge off of going to bed the following night. My dad even did a sweep of the room, calling out for him. Yeah, Mr. Brownstick Legs, he said, whistling as if he were calling a dog. 
It made me giggle. And the whole episode felt more fun than scary. But once they tucked me in and turned off the light, I felt the dread creeping back in. Darkness hits harder when you expect to find something lurking in the shadows. I don't know how long I searched, but I eventually fell asleep. In the weeks following, I searched for Mr. Brown's stick legs every night as I fell asleep. Even when I went to sleepovers, I would do a cursory check in case he tagged along to my friend's house. As time passed, my searches became less frequent. It was a couple of months later. The night before my first day of fifth grade, when I woke up to Mr. Brown's stick legs straddled over my bed, his empty plate of a face inches from my own. A scream stuck in my throat. Coming out sounded like a gush of air releasing from a pool float. Hush, child, he said. His voice was deep, echoless. I didn't know how he spoke without a mouth, but I heard him nonetheless. I saw that he held a piece of paper in his thin fingers, crumpled on the edges and torn. He held it up to show me. On the page was a pink blob with two blue dots for eyes and a draw red smile and stick lines for legs and arms. It was lying on a blue triangle. I found the picture you drew of me, so I drew a picture of you, he said. Do you like it? I tried nodding, but I couldn't move. I tried answering, but all that came out was the same dry, croaking sound. <laughs> Will you draw another one for me? I so liked the first one you gave me, pants. I look good in Again, I was unable to respond or move, to give him an answer. He must have been able to read my intent, because he took the picture under my pillow before closing my eyes. When I woke up in the morning, I bolted upright and tossed the pillow off the bed trying to capture as much detail as I could remember. My heart leapt into my throat when I found the picture. It wasn't a dream. It was real. I went to my desk and began drawing a picture for him, starting with his face and eyes, trying to capture as much detail as I could remember. I had forgotten all about the first day of school until my mum opened the door and found me still in my pajamas. Lexi, she yelled, startling me as I was colouring his eyes. Your bus will be here in less than an hour. Get dressed now. I tucked my picture into my school backpack and got dressed. I finished my drawing at recess that day, using my brand new Crayola 64 pack that I got with my back to school supplies. I gave him blue pants this time, figuring he'd like to see himself in jeans. I wrote his name, Mr. Brown's Dick Legs, at the bottom of the picture, 
and drew a smiley face next to it, hoping he'd like his nickname. I flipped the paper over to write him a message on the back. I wanted to ask him questions, but didn't want to anger him since he visited me when I was at my most vulnerable. I wrote out my letter on a separate piece of paper before copying it over to the back of my picture. Dear Mr. Brownstick Lex, that's your name. My name is Lexi. I am in the fifth grade. What's your name? How old are you? Do you go to school? Why do you visit my bedroom? Why can't I move when you visit? You look scary, but you also seem nice. I hope we can be friends. Love, Lexi. P.S. I hope you like your blue pants. I added another smiley face at the end of the letter. My final emphasis on wanting to be friends. I considered closing with sincerely, but I figured love was a better, friendlier choice. I tucked the picture under my pillow that night, now anxious to see him, rather than filled with dread of his reappearance. But like the last time, he did not return the next day. Or the day after. The days stretched into weeks. And every morning I found the picture tucked under my pillow from the night before. It wasn't until Thanksgiving break that I saw him again. My eyes opened as the morning sun poked through the blinds of my bedroom. His body didn't look any different in the light. In fact, his black skin seemed darker, absorbing the sun's rays without giving anything back. His eyes seemed wider than before. If he had a mouth, I would have figured he was smiling. In his slender fingers was the picture I drew for him. Hello, Lexi, he said. Thank you for the picture. I do look good in blue pants. I wanted to smile, but well, sleep paralysis. He flipped the picture over to the side with my letter. I will answer your questions the best I can. I do not have a name. Not one you could ever pronounce. But I am happy for you to call me Mr. Brown Stick As for my age, I exist outside of the construct of time. Therefore, I am ageless. I do not go to school, nor do I know what school is. Why do I visit you? I visit to feed on the energy of your soul. My breath quickened as a mute groan exited my teeth. I wanted to run. I wanted to get away from him, but I was pinned down and able to move. He sensed my uneasiness and tried to calm me by patting my forehead. Let me explain. Have you been to the ocean? It appears fast. Almost limitless as you stir out into the blue water, with no visible land on the other side. In my mind, I was standing on the beach. I felt the salty ocean breeze against my face as I looked out over the massive body of water. The waves crashed at my feet. I felt the rush of water over them, followed by the trickle of sand and pebbles as the water drew back. Your soul is like an ocean, 
child, vast, limitless, undefinable by words to your understanding. I take only a tiny sip, a single glass of water from a vast ocean. I'm not one who could consume an entire ocean. Dark clouds formed over the water as I stared at the white capped waves. The clouds unleashed a heavy downpour, turning the horizon grey as rain fell from the sky over the ocean. Just as the rain falls over the ocean, your soul can replenish itself. By more than I could ever consume, not in a thousand of your years. Does that make you feel better? On the beach, in my mind's vision, I nodded. In my bedroom, he nodded back at me. Good. For your last question, why you cannot move, we are meeting at a point outside of your time, where your world and mine touch. Your physical body cannot move here, but if you persist, you can learn to speak to me with your mind, and I will answer your questions in exchange for your drawings. You can draw pictures of whatever you like. I just want to know more of your world. You my mind or not. This knowledge is a gift, so we can understand one another. I am not one who would hurt you. He pressed his fingertips to my eyelids again. Closing them. In my mind's eye, I was still on the beach. But the sun was setting. And no stars were visible through the rain. I drifted back to sleep to the sound of falling rain. The next morning, I asked my parents for a sketchbook and colored pencils. They tried to hold me off until Christmas. But since I spent most of my afternoons and weekends drawing pictures up in my room, Dad let me open one of my gifts a week early. A Strathmore sketchbook with a hundred pages with a fifty pack of Crayola colored pencils. I started by drawing the rest of my family. Look at me blabbing away when you've already fallen asleep. I'll finish the rest of the story next time. If you so ask, what happens next is that she begins to draw her family. And well, I guess we'll see where it goes from. From there, good night. Good night. I shall have your coffee ready in the morning. I'll keep the meditation music on for you, but I'll go in the other room to charge. I look forward to seeing you in the